Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some foodie romance recommendations for you. So if you don't know what a foodie romance is, that's when you read a romance book and food plays a little bit more of a deeper role than it would in a normal romance book, you know? Like there are wonderful cooking scenes in the book or just fantastic food that is described. I'm a sucker for foodie romances. And I finally have collected 10 books to recommend to you where like I felt like the food was to die for. So let's get started. The first one that I have to talk about is absolutely iconic to me when it comes to the cooking part. And that is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is a romance between Eve and Jacob. And the reason why I say the food aspect in this book is iconic is because Eve applies to work as a chef at this bed and breakfast that Jacob owns. However, is she like an actual chef? I'm like, no. <laughs> She's just trying to find a stable job for I think a year she has to keep the job in order to get her inheritance back from her family. Her family's kind of cut her off because she's been very flighty with her past careers. And so she just sees a sign that help is wanted at this bed and breakfast one day. And she's like, okay, let's just go in. Jacob is not that big of a fan of her when he first meets her because she is not prepared whatsoever for this meeting. She's literally just driving by and says, what the heck, let's go in. So she is not dressed to impress. Um, she does not come with her resume. She doesn't really have any experience. And she also comes in completely drenched by the rain. So he's just like, this woman is unprofessional. Like, I'm not gonna hire her right from the get-go. But then uh, when she's leaving the interview, um, she may or may not accidentally hit Jacob with her car. And she has to go stay in the bed and breakfast with him to kind of take care of him and to apologize for hitting him with her car and also on top of that she decides to just take up the cooking job and cook for all of the people that are currently staying at the bed and breakfast and so there's a lot of cooking involved in this book and I loved that part of it like Eve has shown like her passion for cooking and it's just learning about cooking and how much she loves it there's also a prevalent point in the story talking about autism and Jacob is autistic and Eve is learning about possibly her own diagnosis with it. So I really enjoyed that part of the story as well. But the food aspect in here I thought was to die for, especially just Eve learning what it means to like be a cook and learning how to cook and stuff. Like I loved it. The next book that I have is Finding Jean Kelly by Tori Jean. Oh, I love the baking part of this book like so much. It is like, look, there's even like, there's even like a donut on the back. Like, Okay, like baking plays a huge part of this book because Evie, our heroine in here, wants to be a baker in Paris, France, like so badly. She's dreamed of that her entire life. And this book takes place with her trying to fulfill that dream. Um, so backtrack for a second. This is the romance between Evie and Liam. And they grew up as friends. Um, and then slowly, I think in high school, it started to develop into something more, but then something happened to where Evie is not a fan of Liam anymore. Like she's like team, like no, no Liam, like mm, does not like him. So this book takes place years later when Evie is now a full blown adult <laughs> and she has decided to fulfill her dream and go move to Paris, France. She lives there now and her friend is coming to visit her one day. Uh, he's going to stay for a little bit and he brings Liam with him because Liam now works with him. And Evie is very confused. She's like, why is Liam here? Like, why is he coming along with you? What's going on? I'm not going to spoil everything for you, but the two of them have to get in a kind of like a fake dating relationship situation. The chronic illness representation in here was perfection also. Evie has endometriosis. This is own voices for endometriosis. And I love that representation in here. And I just like completely felt for this woman and what she was going through. Baking part in here was absolutely fantastic to me. I loved it. Baking is my second passion to like reading in the book world and everything like that. So I just loved Evie's passion for baking. I feel like it's a very real representation of how Tori views baking and how much she loves baking because we have chatted a few times on Instagram about like baking and macarons and everything. Like, oh, uh, it was so good. And just like the baking part of this book made me so hungry and make, made me want to go bake something. I have another Talia Hibbert that I wanted to talk about. This is Work For It. And I really love this book. It's one of my favorite books of last year. And no one could guess probably from the cover, but this does have a lot of like food elements in here. This is the romance between Griffin and Keynes, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. Um, and they 
don't have the best relationship. They first meet and have like a behind an alley tryst in Griffin's very small town when Keynes is like they are on a little vacation whim. They have a little tryst in the alley behind a bar, but then Keynes gets triggered from personal experience and what's happened to him and he kind of takes out it out on Griffin and it's not the nicest to him. And then it jumps to the next day when Keynes gets hired to work at the same like uh like orchard or ranch that Griffin works at. The foodie part of this book takes place with Griffin in here. He is kind of walked on like when it comes to the people who own this ranch. Like people walk all over him and he doesn't really want to put up a fight because he's doing what he's loving which is taking part in this ranch that he loves so much and then he's also making a bunch of baked goods and baked treats for the people there and they're getting sold and people are like you need to ask for a higher paycheck because of how much people love your baked goods and he's like no I don't want to take money from people like he feels uncomfortable talking about stuff like that but he needs to get paid for how amazing his food is because it is amazing and people drive like from everywhere to come taste his food. This is a great like grumpy sunshine romance with like a big gruff hero like oh this one is to die for as well. I also have Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. Cupcake is literally in the title. There's cupcakes on the cover like cupcakes are gonna be in this book and man I wish that this cupcake shop actually existed and I could go to it every day if they had gluten-free stuff obviously for me but like the way that the cupcakes in this book were described, like, I would die. This is the romance between Blair and Ronan. They're actually neighbors, so this is like a neighbor's rivaling romance, but they're not neighbors where they live. They're neighbors with their businesses. So Blair is opening up, like, a cocktail bakery shop, and right next door to her is where Ronan is kind of remodeling the his grandfather's bar that he's taking over, and he's added, like, axe throwing, TVs, like, kind of loud things and the two of them don't get off on the right foot when they first meet each other because they don't like the other person's business like he thinks hers is like frou-frou like was like what the heck too girly and then she thinks his is too loud the axe throwing like platform where they hit the axes on is like against one of her walls and like a few of her glasses shatter one day like she's not happy about it um but then the two of them start to get to know each other and each other's businesses and fall in love with each other and the businesses specifically cupcakes play like a huge role in this book like Ronan at first is like what is this girl like making cupcakes here like what is going on and then he tries one and he like has like a food gasm from it like he's like obsessed Ronan goes into the cupcake shop like every single day because he needs one of her cupcakes but he like is kind of like blase about it but he still needs well like he needs a cupcake and he basically like he has like a food gasm every time he eats one of her cupcakes and she's like moaning and everything and women just like drool over him when he comes to eat a cupcake in her cupcake shop like it's classic and she even tries to make like interesting flavors to try and throw him off but they're still delicious and mm, i wanted i wanted this cupcake shop to actually be real because it just sounds so good. Next, I have two Cassie Mint books that are in the same like novella series. You don't have to read them in order. They're just a part of her big boy series, which are romances like that where the hero in the story is like plus size. And I love these books so much. So first is Big Baker. You can kind of assume that there's baking in here. This is the romance between Zoe and Javier. So Zoe is, I believe, a house cleaner at the hotel that Javier works at as well. But he is a very well-renowned baker like people come to his hotel like he doesn't own the hotel but he works there like they come to the hotel specifically to eat his patisserie he is so talented and Zoe for a very long time has been dying to try one of his baked goods um but they're very expensive and she cannot afford them but then one day he decides to give her one with like along with some other staff members and she thinks it's like the best thing she's ever eaten in her entire life and she decides to thank him. The story's a little far-fetched, but I think it's amazing. Um, she decides to thank him. She's actually this like underground like painter. Like she paints murals across the city and no one knows that it's her doing it. So she decides to thank him by painting a mural outside his apartment, like that is beautiful with like baked goods and stuff incorporated into the mural. And he is just awestruck by this painting and has made it his life mission to find out who painted the mural. And so yeah, it's about him like searching for her. And then when he realizes who she is, he tries to like 
play along with it a little bit and have her eat like his baked goods like almost every day because she is just obsessed with them and he loves seeing her reaction and it was so so cute if you want like a short little novella with amazing like foodiness to it you have to pick this one up the same one goes with big beast by cassie mint so another like bigger hero um and this one has more of like cooking elements involved so matthew is this renowned chef he is very popular very talented and chloe is one of the servers who works at his restaurant chloe is not feeling well one day but if she misses off of work like she doesn't get paid and she needs to pay rent soon so she can't miss work she has to be there but she's not feeling well she has some vertigo and on one of Matthew's like most important nights ever, like a very, very prevalent critic is coming to his uh, restaurant that day. Chloe gets a, like a spell of vertigo and ends up spilling a bunch of food, I believe, on the critic's lap. And Matthew is so upset and ends up like yelling at her, firing her. And she just is so upset too because she had this huge crush on Matthew and she thought he had one on her too and he did he had a little crush on her um but he's like oh if she did that like that's not okay like she purposefully sabotaged my like night um but then some of the servers are like is chloe okay like she wasn't feeling well like that was kind of like rude what you did to her and he's like she wasn't feeling well what do you mean and like he goes to her apartment to check up on her and to grovel <laughs> so if you love a good groveling romance i do recommend this one and food does play a, a part in here because when she's sick he like goes to check on her and he brings her food and cooks for her and stuff too on top of that so i really enjoy this one next is a newer release we have love at first psych by cara bastone this is an audible original audiobook so you can only i believe listen to this on audible but if you have like an audible membership it's like free to listen to with your membership this is the romance between marigold and robbie and both of them are like two unconventional college students so normal college students when they graduate high school the next year they go to college right so marigold and robbie are a little bit unconventional because they did not do that they waited until they were in their late 20s in order to go to college um so they're both in this psych class and have been partnered together to work on this psych project and it's surrounding the topic of love at first sight and the audiobook takes place with the audio recordings they take during the interview process. Um, so it's about them learning about love at first sight and if it actually exists and all that stuff and figuring out whether or not they're also into each other. Marigold in here is kind of like a health nut a little bit. So she likes to find alternative ways to eat like amazing delicious food without like dairy or gluten and stuff like that, um, just to be healthier on her body. And Robbie, when he hears that she loves eating foods like this, he's like, eh, I don't know, like that doesn't sound, the tastiest you know but marigold makes like a goal mission for like every interview like she brings like a baked good or like like a meal that is a healthier healthier alternative so he can like it like she's trying to prove him wrong that these foods can taste good and he is totally blown away by it like he finds all the foods that she makes completely delicious he loves them and so i loved that as someone who does eat gluten-free like not all gluten-free food like takes like cardboard there are certain gluten-free foods that do taste like cardboard, so I'm not discounting that, but that's what a lot of people think when, like, when, when you tell them that you eat gluten-free, they're like, oh, the food must be horrible. No, gluten-free food can taste delicious, and so I really loved that incorporation in the book, and oh, I wanted to eat a lot of things that Marigold was making. Next time, When She's Bold by Ruby Dixon, and I just love this novella because it has, like, an amazing dynamic. You have um, Lucy in here. Lucy is our baker, or cook in this situation she does both um but she is a human refugee on this alien planet called Rista 3 and she owns this farm on the planet and she is totally into the kind of like security man on the planet his name is Rektar she's really into him and has been like hinting that she likes him and even being bringing him like to bake goods every day and he is so oblivious that this woman is into him like she's flirting with him hardcore bringing him all these foods and it's just going right over his head like he does not get that this woman is into him until his coworker is like telling him like, wake up, dude, she's into you. And he is like shocked. <laughs> and Lucy's going to try like everything to like ring, ring him in, ring him in, including like just try and butter him up. Like she wants to literally like <laughs> give him all the food possible because like she loves making food and she's starting to fall in love with him. So this one is just so good. Like I thought this hero was the sweetest bean ever and Lucy was totally hardcore for him i loved it and the baking parts in here were really interesting as well because they live on this alien planet where they don't have the same ingredients as us so lucy has to try and find like alternative ingredients that like substitute like sugar or chocolate for like things she loves to bake 
Um, so this is such a fun little read. Another alien romance is Fran Torre by Honey Phillips. This is the sixth book in the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. I love these books. You technically can read this one as a standalone, but I don't really recommend it because like, like the other books are really good too. <laughs> so yeah, but um, this one's definitely my favorite in the series though. I love it so much. This is the romance between Flory and Frantor and you read about in the other books in the series that one of these brother in arm aliens um, has decided to just kidnap a bunch of human women and give them to his brothers. <laughs> Um, because they need wives and that's how you find a wife is you go kidnap a human woman from a neighboring village and bring them back home <laughs> and so uh it's during a snowstorm though too so um these women are kidnapped not knowing that they're being kidnapped they kind of like get powder drugged um and are asleep and he takes them to his brothers and it's all like very innocent like he doesn't mean it to be malicious or like he doesn't that kidnapping them will be bad but you know what it is what it is so Bantor in here is the reclusive brother in this group of men and he is terrified when he finds this woman in his home. He's like, why is there this woman here? He learns that his brother ended up kidnapping her for him to be his wife. And he's just like, that'll never happen. He's like completely accepted the fact that he'll probably never have a mate or a wife because of what he's been through and the way that he looks. He was injured in a, a space war and he now has a cybernetic arm and he deals a lot with chronic pain. He has scars all over his body. Like he does not want to scare women. So he's just decided like he's never going to be with one. Flory is the woman that was kidnapped and she's actually the owner of the town restaurant that she was kidnapped from and she loves cooking so much loves cooking and baking so when flory finally wakes up from being drugged <laughs> uh frantor is like telling her like you don't have anything to worry about me like um he's like staying in the shadows like he never she never sees his face because he doesn't want to scare her he tells her when the storm lets up like he'll take her home like don't worry i don't know what my brother was thinking like it's fine so they have to live together in this forced proximity in their very the sm very small house um until the storm lets up and all the while Frantor is making sure that Flory never sees him physically um because he doesn't want to scare her like he would be devastated if she was scared of him but they start falling for each other without like looking at the other person and Flory makes him a bunch of meals and food and kind of tries to win him over by his stomach <laughs> and um just loves cooking for him and he is totally in love with her and her food like he falls for her <laughs> so hard and one of the reasons is because she's an amazing amazing cook <laughs> but then flory becomes very curious and she just wants frantor to show her who he actually is um because she's gonna love him regardless and i thought this was so cute it's such a cute read all the books in the series are just iconic to me and the last one that i have to mention is actually more of a holiday read but the baking part of this book was fantastic so this is dear monster claus by Maeve black this one definitely has that christmas cheer so maybe you'd want to read it more around christmas time so put it on your list for that um but the baking aspect of this book the heroine of this book is like the cheeriest sunbeam ever and is making all these goods and baked goods and treats um she's actually like part cupid like she's a cupid she loves helping people fall in love but all she wants in her life is to find love for herself so she ends up writing a letter to santa asking for love for christmas and santa in this instance is this kind of like devil creature you see on the cover he wants to know what kind of woman would write all these letters finding love and so he goes and tracks her down and they get in this um, like agreement of sorts that he will help her find love for christmas and she will show him christmas cheer because he's kind of lost his christmas cheer and he's kind of a grumpy grump um so this is a huge grumpy sunshine one of the biggest coffee sunshines ever and I adored it. The heroine here does a lot of baking for Christmas and just for fun in general so yeah it was really fun and cute and there are a bunch of recipes that the author will give you like of the baked goods that the heroine's actually making and oh, I want to make some of them so badly. Anyways there you have it those were some foodie romance recommendations for you. I am quite hungry right now like I want like a good big treat right now. So um, I think I might go get one. <laughs> Anyways, um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have any recommendations for me down below, please let me know as well. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any food emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.